Okay, hello again to my talk about RHQ and job on system management with that. Um, my name is Heiko Rupp, I work for Red Hat and uh, you see my contact data here. Now when this talk, when I was asked about giving the talk, I submitted uh, my proposal as system management with RHQ. Um, I got an answer back, ah, you're talking about job, oh, yeah, that's cool, let's do that. And now I can also learn RHQ here and um, JWAS Operations Network. And what it's actually about is we have these open source management projects, RHQ and job on, and then we have we, Red Hat or, J Red Hat or JWAS, a commercial tool called the JWAS Operations Network, which is built of um, those two other ones, buzzwords. Um, now, in the past, and I will show some history slides later on, we have um, had Project RHQ as a foundation, and on top of that, we had JobOn, which were the, the JWAS management bits, and on top of both, is built JWAS on. And since last September, we are in the lucky position that we only have RHQ anymore. So while you will see, still see the term JOPO out there, it is being phased out. RHQ is the open source project. And RHQ is living under rhqproject.org. So that's the main wiki documentation side of the whole project. Um, you don't have to write that down, or you can of course, but I will post my slides at least to my blog and this gets syndicated to the JWAS blog feed and I guess first then we'll have them somewhere linked as well. So it's rhqproject.org. We are using some other infrastructure for a few services like the Fedora hosted Git repository for all of our source code and also the Baxilla from Red Hat from now on. We did have in the past two separate uh, Jira instances, one at rhqproject.org and another one at jobber, uh, slash jobber. But uh, this was always a little bit of pain for people to decide um, if they wanted to report a bug or a feature in which uh, issue tracker uh, should that go. So that's also done now. That the job on Jira exists, but it should no longer allow you to post new bugs. So everything in that area here in the Git repo, you will also find the source of all the bits from RHQ. And so you don't have to go to two different repos as in the past. It's now completely integrated. But um, before I continue with those boring slides, let's go off um, for some demo and have a look at the application itself. So it's about monitoring and management of systems, of servers, from where we come from. It's uh, mostly targeted at JWAS services and servers, um, like the JWAS application server, JWAS cache, Hibernate, and Tomcat, or embedded Tomcat, but it's not exclusive. I will show you later a list of plugins um, that are available. The list is not even complete and it's really, uh, simple to write a new plugin for a new resource to manage. So this one here is the start page, the dashboard. You see information about what you have in inventory, that's a thing called the platform. That's basically um, a machine where services run on. So, one Linux machine is one platform, another Linux machine is a second platform, <laughs> and so on. So this is currently my laptop here, it's one platform with 10 servers and 289 services. I'll show you the means, so just take it for given at the moment. Um, those server and service, how you, where you put them, your stuff, is sort of arbitrary anyway, so it's, um, it's an art grouping. Um, we don't have any groups defined and we're currently getting 100 on, on, on 7 metrics which is measurement values in per minute from the measurement subsystems. 
up here we have an order discovery portal, so when, you, when the system file will show them to you up there, and then you can decide to take them into your entry or uh, decide you don't want it. So, for example, if you just fire up a new JWS application server um, for testing, while the discovery run is coming in, it will be discovered and shown up in this wallet. Um, like um, that guy. And when you say, no, that's not my production one, I just wanted to test something and I don't want to monitor it, you don't take it in into inventory, but you click on ignore. And uh, then you have some recent ad recently added resources. So you see a history, what's got added to the system. You can define some favorites. You see here about recent alerts, which alerts got fired. I will talk about alerts more in detail later on. Here you can um, see operations on resources that were triggered recently or that are scheduled to be triggered. So it's possible, for example, for the system that you define reboot my JWS AS server every night because I know it has a memory leak or my application has a memory leak of the server itself. And you can just uh, reboot it like that. And here we also have has alerts or currently unavailable um, list of things, so it's sort of a list of things to, to learn about. So, now when you, let's have a look at one platform, for example, that's um, my laptop, and you see a, a bunch of icons. When I go to the server list, it's even more impressive, I guess. And these items stand for some subsystems within um, the system. So you have this little icon here that looks like a monitor with a, with a zigzag curve. That's about the monitoring subsystem. Then you have this, um, this, this, this little um, notepad. notepad. Yes, thanks. thanks. That's about the inventory. I will show you the subsystems um, again in a moment. The flag for alerts. This, um, this play button for operations. This uh, thing which looks like an explorer icon, a mini explorer icon, is about a content subsystem. Is it a content? And this one I don't re recall at the moment. <laughs> um, so you can also see, uh, here the range is about configuring resource. You can see not every resource has all of the icons. That depends on the plugin that you write and how much you want to support in the plugin. Sometimes it makes no sense to um, configure a resource because for a platform, for a Linux machine itself, not for a service like ETC host, but for the machine itself, it very often makes no sense to configure it. So it's a, or if it's a hardware chip that you just are monitoring and, and has no option to, to upload values into it, um, we don't have a configure icon. So let's go back to my platform, or perhaps, uh, no. so, I think uh, I get many of these um, unavailable icons, the red icons, are due to the new network address that I just got from the DHCP system, because the system um, expects the same host to be at the same place. That's, uh, yeah, some of those effects. Normally in a production environment, you would have fixed IP addresses for that. So this summary page, each resource has a summary page, so you can sort of a dashboard for that resource. You see the recent measurement values, and so the last one that got measured, and a little um, graph on how it developed in the past. You see a list of alerts and how severe they were. So it's medium, low, or high priority. Some out of bound metrics. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, so configuration updates. You see those. So nothing happened here. Our ah, package packages are upload, uploaded, and these are the events. Okay. So, so let's go here for the used swap space for each. Um, metric, you can have graphs, you have the small graphs and then the large ones like this and um, the system is calculating bounds between those metrics normally uh, are, are, are measured or the, the, the default 
default value so so it takes the last n days of data and computes the bounds and now when uh, the value is going over or, or below the bound it will trigger an out of bound um, exception sort of and this is shown because very often you know um, the active thread count is between for your application between 70 and, and 80 and if, it, if, if this one goes up to 120 you know it's an error condition it's even possible to, to alert then on this being out of bounds or out of bounds by a certain percentage So this is the, the, the default monitor tab. So by default, from the monitoring system, subsystem, you implement in the plugin that you want to monitor your values, and then you implement a little bit of code, and it do all the values back, back, and these get automatically graphed in here. Um, this is relatively generic. We have um, algorithms to compute the right percentage so that you don't put the right uh, value range but it's sort of default in those systems we can also have tables if you say well I, I rather want to know the exact minimum and max, uh, maximum values than, than the, the graph and um, now we have something in addition to the pure numeric values these are the so-called traits. Traits are always considered as string values and um, when the system is taking them, it compares them with the previous trait value and if the two are the same, nothing, no new record is there stored in the database and the database only stores an updated version when this trait changes. So for example, when an operating system update comes in from 10.6.2 to 10.6.3, this trade value will uh, change and you will see when it has changed. About um, the database size for monitoring data anyway, um, we are compressing the data, so we have each we have one hour aggregate, six hour aggregates, and one day aggregates, and we can keep that by default up to a year, so your database won't explode. You're purging the raw data and have and keep the, the compressed one so you get still a very good overview of what happened in the, in the past without um, all the huge amount of data. Okay, then we have here a little sub-tab about the availability. So you see when did your resource go up and down and what, how many failures and up for how many and, and things like that. So it's also per resource. And the last one, that's the tab about the schedules. On this tab, you specify which of the metrics that the plugin offers for this specific resource type, for this um, Mac OS platform, for example, you want to measure, and how often in which interval. Um, if you have 10 platforms, you can either set a default so that it gets applied to when you import a new platform or do that on a complete group of resources, you don't have to go into each one of it, but you can still override on a per resource level. Okay, then the inventory tab here. Yes. That's, um, you have the overview here about how, what's the name of your resource and then which direct children does it have. That's probably not that much uh, of interest for, for the platform. <coughs> One thing that's more interesting is uh, down here that you can manually add resources that get, do not get all of this covered. In my case, here on my machine is the Postgres database server because the plugin expects some, um, some default values which are just not true <coughs> on my machine, but I can still go in say, okay, add a Postgres server, and then on the next page here, you specify connection properties, and when you did the right thing, it will just be taken into inventory and all its child resources, which are the databases on the database server, plus all the tables, also get pulled in into inventory. So alerts, I'm, I'm going to 
show later. So for the moment, operations will be the, the last subtab. So you have, uh, again, per resource type, various operations that you can uh, execute. So for example, the process list for a Unix machine. In the next step, you specify when this should start. Either you can execute immediately. This is then triggering an action on the actual resource, um, remote resource. So it, here it's all in the same box, of course. But if I have two boxes, it would really reach out on the other box and um, execute the operation on the other one. We can also specify a different start time and recurrence. How often do we want to take the, uh, do that? And when should it end? So it's really like, like in Chrome, you can just say, okay, do that um, every hour or every day or whatever. Then you click on schedule. Let's do that just once. Click on schedule. We have completed operations and you can go in. Click on it and here you see the, the results. It's probably um, in a different format than you, what you would expect when you just know the output of PS minus whatever. Um, but it's still useful and it's uh, just one example of what you can do. When I'm going back here on the summary tab, you also see it now listed here, this recent operation. And then there is this, um, this timeline in here where you can also see on a more graphical view what happened with your system. So you see it was down here in this red bar, this light red bar. Um, here we did have an operation with the green check mark, which means um, what was successful. And when you would get events in, they would show up, or alerts would show up in here as well. That's actually the Simile timeline project from MIT. That's uh, that's very cool on your display those so, yeah, timelines. It's really helpful. It's written in Java uh, script, so it's sometimes a bit hairy when um, you supply the wrong data or not exactly in the format that uh, it expected, especially when you have those strange things like German umlauts in your system, <laughs> or, or time zones which are not US, but uh, when you work around that, it's, it's really a cool library. Here in the tree, that's something that we're currently working on. You can again browse through your resources here it's only this one platform that you see. Um, when you want to go to another platform, you have at the moment to go to the, for example, here resources menu. A little error in the current version that I'm having here, the developer version, and then just um, select servers or whatever, other platforms. Um, when you go on a resource in here, like that one, for example. You can also right click, no that doesn't, this one doesn't support right click, let me find a different one. Okay, so we are currently working on this tree and revamping it so it looks like the right click support is uh, currently disabled. So it should work in the, the next version that you get out there. So, one other thing that we have, you have seen, we have this um, summary page per resource and we have this dashboard, but often that's not enough. So if you want to know about out of bound resource, all about your system or which one is the worst outlier, it's a bit hard to, to click on each resource and to compare them by hand. So what we also have here are so-called subsystem sub views, where you have for various things like configuration changes, metrics, operations, um, a view about this subsystem over the whole system. So
So here, this is about a suspect matrix, which is, are these outliers. They are now sorted by the out of range factor, and the one which is the worst outlier is just on top, so you know on what to concentrate. So it's, it's easy. And here you can also go and for operations, you see all the operations that happened during um, some, some time submitted where you can filter or on resource what happens. It's only this one, so no big deal at the moment. This is um, the first of the two history slides that I was um, talking about. In, we started actually in 2006 with um, the current line of um, programming and in early 2008 we released RHQ1 which was um, the framework and most of the bits of it, but uh, not the Jobber part, which was, all, which was still closed source at that time. Then, um, here in end of 2008, we released RHQ11, on 2.1, JWS Operations Network Product, and after that also the Jobber bit. So this one plus that one sort of gave this one. And then we had these two um, lines of development. One of the results that came out of that was also the embedded jumper, which uh, many of you probably have seen as the embedded console in application server 5. And um, currently we use RHQ 1.3 and in September last year we were finally able to put those jumper 2.3 plus bits into RHQ 1.4, so it's one unified source line. We released a community release of 1.4 build uh, 01. And in this build, we had some issues with people that wanted to upgrade from previous versions of Jopper um, to that version because our plugin system considered the 2.3 version plugins as um, newer than the 1.4 version plugins. So we decided in the process first we are putting some different emphasis and more emphasis on the whole development and also about just this incompatibility with the version numbers that the next version of RHQ will be RHQ3 and last week we released the second community version of it uh, RHQ3.00 build 2 um, which has the, the plugins and this is now the mainline development, RHQ3. We don't have a release date yet, but we plan at least on um, giving out community releases every, every six weeks to two months. And it's expected that from RHQ3 you will also get the next version of JWAS on, which will probably be JWAS on 3 as well. So, after this history review, I want to give a quick architecture overview. Um, the central thing that we have here is the RHQ server or a cluster thereof. So when you want to do load balancing or failover, you can have one or more servers in your data center. It's even possible if you have two data centers to have um, one in each or two in each and then have so-called affinity groups that when an agent, I'll come to that in a minute, um, is talking to one data center and, or one server in one data center and this server is going down, that it will try to talk with the other server in the data center before switching over to the other data center, which is normally not uh, wanted. So, on the server you have um, the access for the administrator is it's the GUI, we have the user interface, as I have just um, shown. We have a command line interface on it, that's, um, that's, that's written also in Java, and um, it uses JavaScript as its language internally. So, um, can write expressions in JavaScript with complete control structures and everything. It even has auto-completion for, for some terms, for resource names and uh, for and other stuff. So it's quite comfortable and, and quite powerful. 
and then we have experimental support for web dev, so you can mount your resource tree as a web dev directory in your explorer or finder or whatever. The server hosts also the database connection. Default databases for us are Postgres and Oracle. Um, there is some support from H2 database. That's an embedded one, which basically the successor of what was called um, hypersonic in the past. Um, this is mainly used for demoing or testing purposes. It's not for production. And then there is some experimental support for SQL Server or for one version of SQL Server. And the other big component that we have here what that you need is the agent. This dotted uh, dashed line shows the platform. So on each platform that you want to monitor uh, and manage stuff, you need an agent. And this agent gets all the agent plugins. And only these agent plugins talk to your managed resources. So in a firewall scenario, you only have to configure uh, the communication between agent and server, but never between server and a target managed resource. So, yes, please. Ah, okay, no question. Um, I was talking a lot about resources. Um, our definition of a resource is everything that can be managed or monitored. I've written a plugin that monitors um, a thermometer chip. So it's, it's just a thermometer sensor, little, um, like a transistor in that size with three pins on the one wire bus. So here it's only monitoring and no managing. But uh, a resource could also be a, 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 any process or a thread count or a memory setting or anything like that. And then each resource um, has a corresponding resource type. A resource type is, for example, Linux or MacOS, it's a JWS AS, it's, um, it's Tomcat, it's an individual data source, it's um, a database table, things like that. And, and the last thing which we have is the resource category. This sort of shows the place um, in the resource hierarchy. You have seen before platform, which is the machine. Then the next level is the server, which could be, for example, a JBoss application server. It could be a Tomcat. This whole thing is sort of recursive. The server can host the server. JBoss AS has this embedded Tomcat server, so that's recursive. And then usually below a server, you have the services, which is a data source in JBoss AS, which is a web application in Tomcat. Um, there is no hard rule on when to use a server or when to use a service. Usually, like um, that, you that when you have a subsystem or a complete process, you model it as a server. And when it's individual parts of the subsystem, you model it as a service. But it's really like as you feel it. Whereas, as okay, that's this um, thermometer chip. And this is again showing this hierarchy which who hosts what. There are even platform services that are not hanging on the server but directly on the platform, like network interfaces. Okay, then we have those subsystems. I have shown it already in the in the UI walkthrough, so I'm not going to mention it a lot. Again, um, it depends on what your plugin defines, which of the subsystems is available for a specific resource type. Usually you want to do monitoring. Availability is technically also a, an own subsystem, but it's I, it's your fault <coughs> kind of the monitoring, sort of. So you always have some inventory, but many resources just don't have any connection properties, no nothing, so you don't need to implement anything in there. So uh, I want to talk a bit about extensibility of the, the whole thing. We have um, now perspectives. Okay, this should automatically pop up. 
um, you can you can write server side plugins that are running in the server that extends the, the server functionality. One of those is the perspectives, which give you a new um, UI look or new views into the UI. And then we have the alert plugins that are alert senders, and then you can write for the agent those agent plugins. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through all of those now. Perspectives that's like um, UI plugins, so it's, it's possible to write a complete new UI screen that's hosted on a tab like this monitor inventory that you have seen um, just next to that in a new um, tab. This can be written in Java, just a normal raw file, or it is or will be possible to even host a complete, complete external application that's written in PHP but that gets some information when it's called and that can even also link back into the main um, UI or core UI. We have various extension points, so it's, uh, it's possible to, to check exchange entries in the top level menu, you can add new tabs, and you can write new pages or exchange uh, existing pages. Then the, the Asian plugins, that's basically the, the functionality those guys that talk to the managed resource that work with the managed resource. Only those talk to the resource that's important again. So it's basically metadata plus, the, plus some Java code. Um, the metadata defines the capabilities of your plugin. So when you say, I want to monitor those two, three, four values, only those two, three values will be shown in the GUI, in the schedules tab or on the monitoring tab no matter how many data the plugin would provide otherwise. Um, the metadata also wires the Java classes together. Um, the plugin can auto discover resources, so it's um, possible when, as I said, when a new resource of that type is coming up, that it gets automatically added to the inventory. And uh, there's a generator available that can help you with writing the plugin. There is a big list of plugins available right now. Many of those at um, RHQ project in the, in the Git repo, but um, also from third parties. And um, I've written a script plugin that can even defer the measurement taking um, to some scripts in, in JRuby or, or JavaScript. So, Many administrators don't like writing Java code, but they know scripting languages like Ruby are well enough, so even that's possible. <coughs> okay. Here are finally with the three boxes. So you have the plugin descriptor, you need to, to write that, that's a bit of XML. You have to write a discovery class, that's only to implement one method that in the, the shortest version just sort of returns its input, and then the component class that defines all the facets for all the subsystems that you want to implement it, and uh, yeah. So this is the, a quick run of the plugin generator. It's a standalone Java archive. It, it asks a few questions here. Do you want platform, server, service, and root of your resource tree from that plugin? Where should it live in the, in the package hierarchy, where should it live in the file system, so which, which are the class names, and now what subsystem do you want to support, do you want to support events, do you want to support monitoring, etc, etc. <coughs> and when all of that is done, it will write out a POM file from the formation and a uh, skeleton plugin descriptor with a few to-do tags in there, and also skeleton Java classes that are fully stubbed out for all the subsystems that you want to support. So you can directly compile it and deploy it. It, it won't do much, of course, but it's uh, already a ready-made plugin. Um, I have created a video, which I hope will be online soon, about how to do that. <coughs> and uh, there are also a lot of um, online articles out now on how to write a plugin, so there should be a lot of resources. And of course, that's the source code of the existing plugins. That's just a list of available agent plugins. Um, I don't want to go through that in detail. 
this list is not exhausted, so I think the source is um, the Git repo, from the source of knowledge. But there is, you, you see, big support for just JWAS software, JWAS LS, AS5 support, JWAS cache. We have an SNP trap key, so other devices like routers can send traps to the system, which get then incorporated in the event subsystem. We have a generic JMX server here, which is which allows you to monitor any um, Java 5 um, resource. I've written a blog post in the past on how to monitor your Eclipse um, IDE with the help of this JMX plugin. So even that's possible. And then outside of our um, domain, there is Infinispan for the successor of JWS Cache uh, monitoring. That is mo for MobiSense, for various parts of MobiSense support. JWS ESB, Mark Proctor just told me that they have for their rules stuff some support. And I'm sure that there are more plugins out there that I don't know about. So, after the agent plugins and the managed resource, monitor resource, we're coming back to the server side plugins about how to extend your server. Those server side plugins live in the server, as the name says, and they basically have access to all server side methods. So, it's, it's possible for you to write a plugin that, that, for example, doing reports on all your resources, or when in inventory, you could write a report about how many um, Windows 2003 servers do you have in inventory, or things like that. Um, we will import, uh, include a read reporting engine sometime in the future, hopefully, but you could use it for, for those purposes. Again, it's um, some metadata plus Java code, and there are some different kinds of server-side plugins. All of them have different versions that extend a base uh, server plugin XML um, format. And, um, yeah, one of the, the most used for, for my side is um, the alert senders that I'm coming to. Other uh, plugins are content sources. We have, for example, in JBoss, um, a JBoss patch feed where customers can get updates to their JBoss AS servers. And this is also a server-side plugin that's contacting the customer support portal, pulling a, a feed with, with the changes, and the customer can then say in, in um, JWAS on, okay, apply, please apply those changes to my application servers. It's also supported by the server-side plugin. The alert plugins are a specialized form of um, server-side plugins. Basically, what you have to do is Again, write a little bit of XML and then implement this one method, alert sender.send, and the argument that you get, an alert that just got fired, and then you have to react on it. I will show an example on the next slide. Um, nice thing is, when we have preferences in the UI for the whole plugin, so it's uh, possible if you have, let's say, an IRC sender plugin that you set as the preferences which IRC server do you want to contact and perhaps some credentials um, on how to contact that. And then alert specific will be, for example, the channel um, this alert should go to. I'll show that in the, in the UI in a few minutes. And these get just injected. You don't have to, to do any work to uh, get at those values. They are just there for free. Um, port, the UI is just driven by the metadata. We have a configuration system, and this just renders the input fields for all of that, which is uh, powerful enough in many, many cases. But sometimes it's not enough. Um, for example, when you want to do extensive searches or, or list picker boxes, then it's still possible to write a custom UI. You, you write an XHTML snippet, a facelet, plus a backend bean in Java, package all of that together, and then you have a custom UI. Also here we have a, a, a script language alert sender, 
where you can define those uh, methods or the implementing method in um, JRuby or in Ruby and have this uh, delivered via Ruby instead of having to write Java code. So it's again appealing, I guess, to administrators. This is a list of available alert center plugins, um, subjects and roles. Subjects are just the user within the RHQ server and roles are things like JBoss operators or um, system operators or business people or something like that and they will just send emails to those. Then we have MobiSense support. So the plugin is talking to a MobiSense server which is then initiating a voice call uh, to you and uh, reads uh, the error message on the phone. I did have in the past uh, a version where you were even, ab even able to do um, touch tones to answer back to the server, for example, to reboot, reboot a resource. This is currently not available in this alert center plugin version. I still um, need to look for a good idea on how to integrate it. So you are free to, to um, help. Um, short message via developergarden.com. They have a, a REST interface where you can talk REST to, a, to an endpoint to um, send short messages. Then microblog, that's Twitter or StatusNet feeds. That's um, interesting, I guess, for when you deploy a StatusNet server within your enterprise. And people can just have their Twitter client talk to that StatusNet server and get the updates from there as well. Um, email is just email sending to anyone. We can then send SNMP traps and also talk to IRC. I have a bot on IRC that's um, talk, uh, reporting alerts and again the script language. And one thing that we did have in older version but which currently vanished in the operation uh, in the alert plugin version is the operation sender that you can trigger an operation like we have seen on an arbitrary resource in your inventory. So it will be possible if you uh, find out that your data so source is running at full connections for um, for the whole time, even if you only will expect five open connections at a time, you can, for example, reboot the whole um, application server if, that, if you think that's a good idea to fix this problem. Okay, that's a quick alert plugin example. So that's the wiring. You write um, this alert plugin descriptor. It's a bit short up there because um, of all these XML namespace headers um, that you have to implement, which I don't want to show here. So basically you have to, to define a name and you can define a package. That's just a Java package where your code lives in and you don't have to specify it here on the plugin class later on. Here in this block, server plugin, colon, plugin configuration, you specify the preferences that's global for all instances of this alert sender. And then down here, alert configuration, these are the, the properties that are specific for one instantiation of, of the sender. We will show it in a minute what's, what's meant here. We need to provide a short name of the sender, which gets uh, shown when you want to define a new alert notification you select from a list of senders and that's the short name that you will see. The Java code for the whole thing here is again this package, public class URL sender, that's that guy. Um, you have this method send. Here you just define the Java code. I'm getting my data from preferences, so the preference value is, is there for you. You say get simple, um, simple value. Host name is the one we defined here in metadata, and this second argument is the default value if the, the operator or the user did not enter anything, you just specify default value. The same here, and your parameters, that's that part. So the data is just there, you have only this one method call to get it. Here I'm opening my HTTP URL connection to that host and port. Uh, getting an output stream and, and writing my message. It's a bit simplified, of course. And at the end, um, 
when you're done, you need to result, uh, return a sender result object. This sender result object expects that you specify it was, if it was successful or failure, and a message. And then there's a third state not shown on this slide, which is deferred email, which means um, this plugin just computed a list of email addresses that should be sent off, but it's not able to determine if sending will be um, successful later because that's uh, only done after all the email addresses have been um, collected. So this plugin kind of know it. And luckily it does not have to implement this sending because it, it is just available for free. Yeah, a little bit smaller part of this left. Okay. It's um, close to the end, but... So, okay. You see, here that's in this plugin, that part, I have just my alert notifications. I have this uh, MobiSense sender. I can show that outside later on if anyone wants to, to see it. Um, here, that's the alert configuration. The part that was down here on the, on the XML snippet. So that's just a, a default rendering. And here you, you add your value. For this roles plugin, we have this custom UI. You see it's not as nice as the provided one, but this is a, a, little, a little bit more complex with those pickers where you can put stuff from left to right and it disappears on the left li list and gets to the right one. So this is not com So you can just write it as you want. And then the last thing, system configuration, plugins. So here is the list of agent and server side plugins. Let's just go into one. So the MobiSense one. Configure. So here, that's this box is this, so this global <coughs> configuration section that was up in, in the XML snippets. Again, render for you for free. So, okay, some URLs for you. RHQproject.org, it has pointers to all of the others, of course. Then my blog, I'm often writing about um, RHQ and how to extend it and on how to do things. So if you are interested, it's uh, something you might want to follow. And then um, we have at jambos.org this um, feed, this RSS aggregator, feed aggregator. So all of our feeds, including mine, about RHQ um, will be fed in this, into that one. So thanks for listening and I will take questions. But before that I have one more thing. Google Summer of Code is coming. We are planning to um, participate in, in that. If you are interested in that, contact me please.